Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 9 a.m. And I'll start by acknowledging that we are gathered on Treaty 6 lands, a part of the traditional territories of the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit in Alberta. The town of Drayton Valley is grateful for the knowledge keepers and elders and the stories and teachings that they share of these lands and its people. I will now ask everyone to stand for the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in our Alaska land, at all Well, before we start the agenda this morning, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year and welcome to winter. It looks like it's finally arrived. I think that's a wonderful thing. I think some of us have uh, have had a little sigh of relief and are excited to see some moisture and it feels a little bit like winter. I don't know if we love the temperatures that are coming with it, but uh, I definitely want to welcome the snow and uh, yeah, just happy new year to everybody. I hope that you had uh, wonderful holidays and you had a chance to relax and spend time with family and friends. And now we are uh, into the new year and it's our first council meeting in January, 2024. We are all hopefully refreshed and ready to go. We've got a lot of things planned for this year and uh, a lot of work to be done. So welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, coming out in, the, in this cold weather. And with that, uh, I will ask administration and council if there are any additions to the agenda this morning. None from administration, your worship. Council, nothing. Is there a member of council that would like to adopt the January 10th, 2023 regular meeting of council minutes? Deputy Mayor Clark, thank you very much for that. All in favor? I almost forgot everybody's name. It's our first council meeting. <laughs> that is carried. Any corrections or amendments to the December 13th regular council meeting and the December 15th, 2023 special meeting of council? If not, is there a member of council that would like to adopt that? Councillor Gamana, thank you very much. All in favor? That is carried. Uh, we have no proclamations this morning and no public hearings, but we do have two delegations. And our first delegation is uh, council recognition for Mr. Charlie Minor. Can you hear me, Charlie, okay? You can? Okay, I'll try to, I'll try to shout. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming this morning. I just want to uh, highlight that Charlie Minor is a long-term community member with a very big heart and impressive list of involvement and active membership in multiple organizations. We most likely will skip one or two that you were part of, but certainly we do want to highlight some of it in, in no particular order and commemorate you for all of the efforts, energy, the wisdom that you have shared with us and everything that you have done for our community. Charlie has been a Cub Scout leader with the Scouts Canada, where he worked with youth ages 8 to 10 who are curious about exploring the world around them and learning new life skills. 
Charlie also served on the 55 Senior Club Board, including the position of treasurer for many years. The finance and treasurer angle comes to the forefront in other boards and committees as well for Charlie. The aspect of financial feasibility and accountability are important when it comes to community sustainability. This could have been a model written by Charlie himself. He lived this and not only for organizations, groups and the municipality, but also supporting this on an individual level. For several years, Charlie, you helped many people do their tax filing with the volunteer tax program for seniors. And on a municipal level and a regu regulatory level, you've been very prominent part of the community in areas such as you served as Drayton Valley Town Council for 18 years and six consecutive councils from 1980 to 1998. You also served on the Yellowhead Planning Commission and on boards that dealt with appeals and land development and resident claims. In the cultural room, you did wear many hats as well. You served on the Max board for numerous years. You worked as a Mason and Shriner to raise money for the community and the Shriner Hospital for Children. Most recently, Charlie donated his library to the fall fundraiser for the Children's Hospital. Thank you so much for that. And you also served many years on the Historical Society and the museum boards, including filling the treasurer position again. Here is that financial angle that you love so much. Charlie, thank you so much for all of the years and the numerous positions that you have given to the community. You are a clear leader and you're an example to everyone. Hopefully others will follow you in your footsteps of what a community engagement and what a community leader truly is. So we as elected officials, the town council and everyone here today would like to say thank you very much. Congratulations to everything that you have done and you have brought to our community. So thank you, Charlie. Senior pancake breakfast. That meant that he never missed the senior pancake. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are definitely a leader and a pioneer in our community. So we appreciate everything that you've done. Absolutely. I enjoyed all the time. Over a while. When I started, I was very cold this year. But we finally can't talk for enough to come down to rock. Times have changed. The changes are good. See? And comfortable with this to yourself. No, just no disrespect to the state of the rain day, not critical. But we didn't have all these damages. We could be able to stone. And when I was on the child of the grand well, the other change in here is a bonus. We remember this, but. We did here. We put the 
extra first layer on the wall. Uh, because he was the first pair of the time. We thought he should come out of town. The other, the other main thing I noticed is it was also another stupid time. And I don't do that very often. But all of the years on the council, I remember struggling. I'll be here for nine years. I was here all the years. Once started it, he felt that as close as we represent. So we should put forth a good appearance. So we insisted we all wear suits. Wow. Before that, I didn't wear the suit very well. <laughs> Every council meeting, I went to the suit. I'll put down the appearance. But I just some of the things I remember. So I don't know what I did. Well, thank you very much. You look fantastic. And coming up with the cold part. Yeah. Well, stay tuned and listen for a while. Where's your guys' suit, say? Well, that's always nice to go uh, take a little trip down memory lane and uh, be acknowledging the people in our community. So I think it's a wonderful way to kickstart 2024 by well, uh, recognizing Mr. Charlie Miner. So again, thank you for everything. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to stay and, and listen and hang out for a little while and, and kind of maybe reflect back on the days that you were in the chamber as well. So again, thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, moving along our delegations, uh, 7.2. We have a Canoe Procurement of Canada RMA Insurance Delegation. We have a Mr. Mark Sosnowski. Is he online, Berkeley? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me? I don't present for, oh, I can hear you, yes. Uh, however, I don't present for uh, Canoe. Um, I will uh, introduce Jesse Patton. Patton. Thanks, Mark. Oh, Hi, my okay. name is uh, Jesse Patton. I'm the manager of business development for Canoe. Are you able to um, see the screen? Are you able to see us right now? Yes, absolutely. I can see yeah, you all at the table. There's four of you. Excellent. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, for us to present here today. As Mark said, we have Jesse Patnode, Manager of Business Development on the left. I'm Mallory Gray, Manager of Member Services for RMA Insurance. We have Cam Vierboom, uh, Manager of Claims, and then Mark Snozowski, um, Risk, risk, advisor. risk advisor. And so today we're going to start off our presentation with Jesse leading it off, and we're going to share our PowerPoint right now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for introducing yourselves. Uh, we are in the council chambers this morning. Uh, myself, uh, Mayor Nancy Dodds, and uh, six councillors. We have our administration, uh, our CAO, and members of the public here this morning. So go ahead. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, my name is Jesse Patnode. I do have uh, accountability, I guess, on a national aspect as it relates to the business side on canoe procurement. And I'll just kind of briefly go over what canoe does and, and uh, how we can add value to the, to the town of Drayton Valley. Um, would sincerely like to thank you for having us today. Uh, it's always nice to uh, show the value that we offer as an organization. A um, couple things that we would like to talk about right off the bat. Uh, we are a not-for-profit agency, so we are owned by the rural municipalities of Alberta. Uh, we collaborate with associations across Canada, and I do have a slide that will cover that here shortly. But we are the largest municipal buying group within Canada. Um, we currently, our reach would extend across the entire country with the exception of Quebec. And what that allows us to do is create partnerships through like-minded associations. And we're able to add value by doing economy of scale procurement following the Canadian Free Trade Agreement, the uh, Northwest Partnership Trade Agreement, and the uh, Canadian European Economic Trade Agreement. I, I think I got that one right. Um, we have about 6,000 members in total uh, throughout the entire country, primarily in the municipal aspect, but we do have a lot of post-secondary education um, entities. We have uh, K to 12 school entities, 
Uh, we have also a little bit in the healthcare space and then basically any not-for-profit. Um, our design is to allow a not-for-profit organization to take advantage of our procurement um, so they can take advantage of the pricing, the economy of scale and all that kind of stuff without having to go to tender on, on their own. We've quantified that it's about 250 hours in total um, for a municipality or a town to post a tender, depending on the side, on the size of it, and that really encompasses the uh, uh, the creating the spec, the posting the tender, um, allowing, allowing vendors to respond, and then the evaluation of the award. We take that administrative aspect away in a fully legal compliant aspect that allows you to purchase what you're looking for kind of directly through our vendors and not worry not that you don't have to worry about the legal aspect, but just feel confident that it's already taken care of for your behalf. Uh, the next slide, please, Kelsey. So this slide here kind of encompasses our reach. Um, as I mentioned, we are partnered with like-minded associations across Canada. Uh, closest to us would be Saskatchewan, so Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities, uh, Civic Info in BC on the other side, but we are partnered uh, actually with the Yukon Territory now as well. So our map's a little bit outdated. I do apologize for that. Uh, but the only exception to provincial aspect that we're not partnering with right now would be Quebec. Uh, we are working on that because, uh, you know, there's there's value for that. They, they've asked us to kind of look into Quebec. There's some legalities that we're working on through that. Um, but we do intend to be there in the next year or so. Our, uh, our association partnerships are very important to us. Like our model is really based on an administrative fee that we work through our vendors with. Um, at no point will any of our members... Uh, such as yourselves, you guys are already set up through our, our system, would ever pay to be a part of our um, of our program. So uh, there's no uh, no fees for you to utilize us. There's no minimum purchase requirements. And just kind of rest assured that we are a governmental not-for-profit here entity as well. Uh, most recently, we've uh, expanded, I think, our insurance and benefits portfolio through the uh, Atlantic, Canada, Atlantic Canada provinces. Um, I know Mallory and Cam had the, the pleasure of being out east uh, recently here. Um, so we just continue to expand our, our portfolio of services uh, throughout the entire nation. Can you get the next slide, please, Kelsey? Just a little bit about why you would choose Canoe. As I mentioned, like we do the economy of scale, so it really doesn't matter the size of your entity. If you're the city of Toronto, the village of Hive, uh, you're going to get the same pricing through our program that you would. There, there's no special advantages based on your size or population. And, um, you know, just to kind of, I guess, clarify what we do, uh, say you were going to do a hockey rink project in, in Drayton Valley and, and you quoted that out at about $75,000. Um, you went to tender on behalf of your town and you got responses based on that $75,000 scope of work. Uh, so you get pricing based on that $75,000 scope of work. What Canoe does is we go out to tender on a national basis and uh, we, you know, quantify that we'll have probably 10 to $12 million dollars. Uh, in the ice refrigeration space, and therefore we get pricing based on what we go to tender for. And that allows you to take advantage of that without having to go through that tender process. As I mentioned, it's about 250 hours um, and allows you to use that and get that pricing. Uh, so you save a little bit of an administrative burden on, on that side, but you also get the, uh, the economy of scale national pricing that Canoe provides for you. As I mentioned, we follow all the trade agreements in Canada. So we have the Northwest Partnership Trade Agreement, the Canadian European Economic Trade Agreement, and the Canadian Free Trade Agreement. Um, we have our own in-house legal team here that kind of bets everything that we do. Uh, we have some very specialized procurement folks here as well that are uh, well known across the, uh, the country in that space. Because uh, we want to make sure that everything we're doing is in a full legal and compliant uh, fashion. Um, I think on the first slide, we had about $250 million. We, we kind of have two, two aspects to our trade program. Um, the first one would be we have our homegrown traditional trade programs that we've built and, and tendered here in Canada. Uh, everything is based on a three-year uh, term with the you know, opportunity to extend one or two years based on the success of that program. And of our homegrown programs, we have about $250 million that runs through that annually. We are also partnered with another not-for-profit, um, I guess more capital purchasing entity out of the US called Sourcewell. Uh, we are partners with them, they do not own us. They are also a governmental not-for-profit uh, agency as well, so they're very similar and like-minded to uh, the RMA and CANU. And uh, what we do is we, able, we post their tenders in Canada on, uh, on Mercs, 
which makes them fully legally compliant here. And that's where you're able to take advantage of some of the more capital purchasing programs, such as Caterpillar, John Deere, uh, Komatsu, um, CDW on the insurance, or sorry, the, uh, the uh, uh, technology side of things. Um, you know, we've got MOR through Granger through them, uh, but it just, you know, provides more economy of scale pricing and deeper discounts for any, any uh, member that we're working with. Everything is tendered on your behalf. So like I said, it's gonna save that administrative time. We try to work with local businesses as much as humanly possible. Uh, generally, you know, there's a Cal Tire or a, a Tire Craft or, or somebody along those lines in most of the towns we work with. Um, but that doesn't limit it to those larger entities. If there's a, a local, uh, you know, shop or service shop or, or parts distribution, Napa, something along those lines, um, that we can work with, and they are a distributor or dealer of one of the tendered programs that we have, uh, you're fully able to use those as well. Not only do we try to support local, but we would encourage local uh, businesses to respond to our tenders and follow the evaluation process as well to see if that we can bring them in. Uh, we also like to take um, uh, recommendations on what programs that we should add to our program. Uh, I think currently we have about 300, 310 uh, total pre-tendered programs uh, available to you. It would encompass everything from pens and paper to wastewater chemicals to uh, um, culverts to tires to ground engagement, uh, right up to fleet purchasing and uh, any kind of construction or snow removal you would need, uh, whether it be a large grader or uh, or wheel loader or something along those lines. The next slide, please. Uh, some other resources we have here within Canoe, as I mentioned, we, we do have our own full legal team here, so we do vet everything that we do to make sure that's in a compliant fashion. Um, you know, the, the trade side of things and the thresholds around purchasing, um, you know, I believe they're about $75,000 for the larger ones. Uh, we take very seriously here at Canoe, so we want to ensure that anybody utilizing our program has that full confidence uh, that they are done in a legal compliant fashion. Be, and in the event you are challenged by another supplier or vendor around the uh, maybe inability to to bid on uh, on a tender through uh, a town, we will support you that with our legal team through that aspect as well. Um, anybody that's a member of Canoe, we really want to ensure that you feel fully comfortable in the aspects of everything that we've done on the trade side of things, um, because it's very important for a not-for-profit to uh, to follow those guidelines for for the compliant aspect. We have uh, really three sides of the house as it relates to Canoe. There's, there's business development, which I would be responsible for. Uh, that's more of the member facing team. So I lead a, a team of client relations managers across the, uh, the country and uh, we're more boots on the ground. So, you know, in, in, a, in a better day when it's minus 30, 30 degrees outside and 10 centimeters of snow for the first time of the year, uh, we would love to be there in person and talking to you around the, uh, the value and programs that we could add. Um, so that's kind of our aspect on the business development side. We also have a supplier relations team, which, you know, I, I mentioned are made up of procurement experts and uh, real leaders in their field uh, across the nation. Uh, we've got Stephanie Dion, who's a, a very uh, prominent figure in the procurement space. Um, she works with the National Group Institution of Procurement. Uh, she teaches for them. Um, she's writing all of our policies to ensure that uh, the things are correct, and we're very, you know, fortunate to bring her on. Uh, we have Tony DeCicio out in Ontario, who is also a, kind of a, a lifelong procurement expert working with uh, the larger entities in Ontario. So uh, we do take the uh, the tendering aspect very seriously, and, and I think the, uh, the support and uh, team we have kind of shows that. On top of that, we have contract managers. So uh, what they're responsible for is to ensure that pricing remains the same and accurate for you folks. Um, the last thing we would ever want would be for you to get a bid on, uh, on a piece of equipment and then somebody comes back to you uh, when it's time to deliver that and say there's a 20% there's a surcharge, sorry about that. Uh, the contract manager's job is to ensure that they work with that vendor to make sure pricing uh, is maintained. And if there are price increases, you know, I think everybody's pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> understanding of the, of the situation and supply chain and, and materials and stuff like that right now. So there are a lot of price increases but we would give you accurate notice. So, you know, 30 days written notice is what our standard is, which would allow you to get in there and kind of like look at whatever tires you might need, <clears throat> ground engagement tools, uh, staples, wear items, things like that, uh, to ensure that you get the best pricing before there are any price increases. Uh, just to kind of mention, uh, you know, as it relates to office supplies, 
last time we quantified that and you know like the, we can we can look at what you're currently paying for things and do a price comparison to see if we can uh, add value and save money uh, but the last time we we looked at that most recently we had about a 16 percent savings on office supplies um tires i believe were close to 10 to 12 percent uh benefits you know we're we're another one where we're saving a good eight percent and we continue to grow our programs based on those value we offer uh, we also have a marketing and communication team that we work with very closely. Uh, we try to be very active on LinkedIn, uh, any other social media aspects, so like whether that be Facebook or, uh, or Twitter, uh, but we, we express our programs through those mediums. We, we try to offer value, any kind of promotions that are going to be forthcoming through that side of things, uh, because we want Canoe to be, uh, to be very prominent in the municipal setting. Um, as I mentioned, we are one of the largest, uh, uh, not-for-profit municipal group, buying groups in Canada. Uh, and I think that covers the aspect of the, the canoe team pretty, uh, pretty in depth, but you know, if there's any ever concerns around the vendors we're using or the legalities of what we do, just let us know and we'd, we'd be happy to, uh, to further discuss that with you folks. And this last slide I'll share with you folks today before I open it up to any questions on, on behalf of canoe here is really the value we offer. Uh, as I mentioned, it's about 250 hours to create a tender from uh, from tip to tail, and uh, you know steps three through nine is where we save that administrative aspect for our membership base. Uh, you basically have to identify your need. You research the options that you want. Specs are covered. You don't have to worry about a specific specification for any piece of equipment. Uh, we encompass multiple specs in our tendering process, so it's not you know really limited to one specification. Uh, the town would simply issue a PO and, and receive your goods and services. Um, we hear often that it's uh, it's too good to be true, but uh, you know, like we uh, we're very good at what we do over here at Canoe on the procurement side of things. Um, you know, obviously the uh, the excellent folks to my right here are going to talk to you about all the value they offer the insurance side of things. Uh, but I, I come from more of a uh, more of a, a sales world, and to uh, to just simply offer value to our members is it's kind of refreshing. Uh, if you see value in the services we offer, you're free to utilize them. Um, if you don't see value in our services, you're free to do whatever you like. Uh, the only thing I would caution is that if, you, uh, if you're looking at a canoe program and you decide to go to tender, uh, just from the legalities of the trade agreements, you have to follow that tender through to completion, whether you award or not, and then you're, you're kind of free to do whatever you like from there. So, um, you know, we're just here to add value. Uh, like I mentioned, there's no membership fees. There's no uh, no costs that the uh, any town or member would incur for utilizing Canoe. It's just simply if you see value in, in what we have to offer, please feel free to use it. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, really uh, Canoe in a soapbox in 20 minutes or less. I'd like to open it up to Council if you have any questions around uh, what we do or the legalities that uh, we follow. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for that. I will now open it up uh, to council and administration for any questions. Councillor Gamana. Thank you. I think you touched uh, on this uh, as well as uh, just to understand, you know, uh, is it from the total amounts that per year that you, you will be uh, making a percentage out of it or how, how would you, is there a membership fee or how does that work? Uh, no, like I mentioned, there's no membership fee to utilize uh, our services. Uh, when we do go to tender for our programs, we uh, we ask our vendors that respond if they would, you know, share an administrative fee with our organization. Uh, that administrative fee that we charge our vendors is really what uh, what pays for myself and, and the canoe team to continue to operate. But at no point do we ever uh, uh, have a, a membership charge to utilize our programs. Uh, it's totally free to use. And then in some cases, even like in the districts and counties of Alberta, we actually pay a dividend back, uh, depending on how well uh, we do as an organization. Okay, thank you. As it relates, uh, so, to, oh, I just oh, wanted to mention, as it relates to the administrative fee, uh, we do share half of everything we collect with the associations that we partner with across the country, including the RMA. And uh, that money is used to go into advocacy, to lobby provincial governments and ensure that, uh, you know, everything that the rural communities need, they're getting for as well. So uh, that of the administrative fee, we do share half of that with the organizations. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, a question is, um, in order to become a client or if we were to consider a canoe, 
Is there any sort of criteria like the size of municipality or rural versus urban? Um, do you particularly look at? Uh, no, no, definitely not. I mean, like I, I mentioned, we're we're more uh, prominent in the municipal space. You know, obviously being owned by the RMA, uh, but urbans are one hundred percent allowed to uh, to take advantage of our programs, and regardless of size. So there is no real criteria to uh, to utilize canoe. Uh, just if you see value, please feel free and uh, look at the programs that uh, may be applicable to you, and we'd be happy to uh, to walk you through those as well. Okay, and then how would you go about doing the, the, I guess, the price and the cost comparison? It would just be with our current uh, provider, then you would look at what we're paying and then what you could offer kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Like we could take a, you know, for fuel, for example, uh, we have a fuel program that we've tendered as well. We have about 60 million liters that run through that program annually. Um, we would take, you know, six, eight weeks of your current fuel receipts. Uh, we would run them, you know, do a comparison at the same time of what our rates and haulage and, and all that would be. And if uh, we could save you money, we would show you, you know, you $1,200 in savings through that same period of time. Uh, but, you know, there's no um, commitment or anything to switch. It's only if you see value in, in what we do. Uh, similarly, if you're using, say, uh, staples for office supplies, uh, we could look at what you're paying on your last invoice and run that same invoice through our program to see if there's savings for you there. And uh, everything we would do on that side would be of no cost to the town. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, I have another question from uh, Councillor McGee. Good morning, Jesse. Um, you you probably are aware of our current provider. Uh, can you tell me what the difference between yourself and our current provider might be? Uh, you don't have to go into too much depth, but just so that it gives me a better understanding of. Um, of where we might be heading? Um, you know, I, I think I'm understanding your, your question correctly. I, I think uh, it's really more of the breadth of programs that we would offer on our side versus what would be applicable to you now. Um, so, I, you know, I don't think, you know, as it relates to associations, there's not, you know, much difference. One's focused on uh, one side of things, one's focused on more of a rural community. Um, but, you know, all we really try to do is we, we expand our program base um, you know, off information that we get from towns and municipalities and other not-for-profits to see what's really needed out in those communities. And uh, like I say, we're just here to add value. So if you could take advantage of the programs we, ho we offer, you're fully free to do that. Uh, but as it relates to differences between uh, associations and stuff like that, I, uh, I just know that we have, a, I think, a larger breadth of services. Yeah, I thought that might be the case, and, and it's for us then to decide whether or not we can we can use those. Another question I have is that um, when you think of rural, um, and I would say we're, that we're rural and in a small community, one of the things that we, uh, we look at uh, is to try to um, uh, buy locally and keep our local shops uh, open. And uh, so sometimes it's, uh, it, it's, it's much more... Um, serious question to uh, to try and save a bunch of money on one side and and uh, have our stores closed on the other side so um have you taken that into account yeah we uh, we definitely look at what respondents we have when we do post a tender to see what the network looks like in more of a rural setting um in most cases we are able to support local business if they are partnered with a manufacturer that we are partnered with as well but in some cases, we're just unable to. So it's really more of, uh, you know, we would never want to uh, indicate that money savings over local business or, or, or uh, uh, supporting local business is priority over money savings. Uh, but we just try to add value in the aspect that we do have a larger uh, economy of scale pricing. We will work with the local uh, uh, business as much as humanly possible, but in some cases, we're just unable to. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, go ahead, Mr. Ferris. Our CAO has a question. Uh, thank you uh, for the presentation, Jesse. Uh, I have two questions for you. Um, number one, if um, if we do join uh, Canoe um, and uh, further to Councillor McGee's question, uh, if we if um, a price comes back. Um, do we have to uh, use uh, canoe procurement to buy whatever it is we're purchasing, or can we go out on our own to support local? 
Um, no, you are 100% free to do whatever you like following the uh, the trade agreements here in Canada. So uh, that's a good point that you can, you know, utilize our vendors to kind of get some pricing and ballpark aspects as to where you will be cost wise for the products you're looking for. Uh, but being a member of Canoe, like I say, there's no obligation to utilize those programs. You, you're fully free to use our vendors to, to do a little bit of a price comparison to see where things look like on that side. Uh, but if should you engage or be you know be a member of Canoe and then talk to one of our vendors, you're not bound to make that purchase. You're free to do what you like. Um, but having said that, if you do not utilize our pre-tendered programs or programs tendered on your behalf, you will have to go to tender obviously and, and follow the the free trade agreements in that aspect to uh, to support your local businesses. Thank you. Understood. Uh, my second question is, and I can appreciate the uh, administrative uh, estimate of time savings. Um, but um, going uh, through canoe, does that impact any um, any timing that we may have? So if we have, um, say we're a member of your organization and we have a tender for a uh, new command truck, um, is, there, is there periods of time where you wait to release a bunch of tenders? Is there any impacts on our timing? Uh, no, none at all, right? So we uh, we have a, well, we're, we will be posting a calendar on our on our canoe procurement website that kind of shows uh, what tenders will be up for reevaluation by month. Um, but the timing you have, like they're all tendered on your behalf. So if you're looking at a command truck right now, and we've got that program available to you, um, as long as that vendor has that product available, um, you can you can purchase it almost immediately if if it's on the lot. Uh, but aside from that, you'd be bound to any kind of delivery times through the uh, through the vendor in question. Uh, but it wouldn't impact your timing whatsoever. Well, thank you very much. Go ahead, Councillor Evans. Another question? Yeah, just a quick one here. Um, so as far as the tenders go, would uh, would you folks work with uh, with the staff here if we had uh, uh, maybe some special requirements. I'm thinking uh, about uh, um, service requirements. If we buy a piece of equipment, you know, it's one thing to put a tender out there, get a a good price, but uh, of course you want the uh, the follow up service with that. And sometimes you can uh, you can end up with a piece of equipment that uh, you need to wait uh, uh, weeks for a service tech to come out if they're based in even another province. So. I guess my question is, will you work with our staff to put in any particular um, uh, special requirements or pieces of that uh, of that tender? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a very good point. Um, we do have the capital purchasing side. So if you're looking at larger construction equipment or fleet services, uh, that's a, you know available for you to purchase. But we've also built programs here in Alberta and on a national basis that support the servicing aspect. Uh, we are very big believers in total cost of ownership uh, over here at Canoe and sometimes, uh, you know, buying the low, lowest piece of, uh, of equipment out there price wise is, is going to cost you more in the long run. Uh, so we partner with, uh, you know, Finning, for example, we offer a parts and service program through Finning, uh, which gets you preferential treatment on the uh, parts side and the service side of things. Uh, we just launched a program with um, SMS Komatsu for a similar aspect on parts and service. Uh, all of our fleets are supported with uh, maintenance strategies as well, whether it be through enterprise, there's the you know, option for you to purchase maintenance programs through there. Uh, but yeah, we do believe in uh, supporting anything that runs through our program after the fact on a parts and service side. Uh, if you are struggling to, um, you know, maybe get a technician booked or somebody in your area, we can uh, work with our contacts at these uh, entities to ensure that you get the service you need right away. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That looks like it's uh, that's it for questions on our end. Go ahead. Thanks. So we'll just gear up our, our next PowerPoint here. Um, the next few slides are just going to take you through some historical information on RMA insurance and some benefits that we could bring to the town. popping up here we go all right so once again my name is Cameron Verbum I'm the manager of claims here at RMA 
And uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about our history and how we kind of came to be. So next slide, please, Kelsey. In uh, 1909, the AAMDNC began. And um, we progressed over into 1955 is when essentially the insurance side of things came to be. Uh, that's when we first created our own insurance agency. And from 1955 until about 1985, uh, we harnessed the buying power of the communities of Alberta in order to provide this insurance product. In 1984, there was a property crisis. Um, municipalities and uh, like-minded organizations were unable to get insurance. So in 1985 is when we opened up our first insurance reciprocal, essentially pooling the resources of Alberta municipalities together in order to provide coverage that was no longer available or extremely difficult to obtain in the market. This continued on until about 2001, uh, when a similar situation happened with liability insurance. Liability insurance became increasingly difficult to obtain for municipalities and, and in general. And so in 2002, we opened up our second um, reciprocal is the Genesis liability. And this continued on until 2016. Um, Jubilee and Genesis merged together. Um, so we took our property and our liability and we brought them together. And then we also uh, rebranded in 2018 from AAMDNC and Jubilee Insurance Agency to the RMA Insurance. In 2019, we started to see cyber liability, obviously becoming very um, popular type of product, but it was extremely difficult to obtain. So we once again brought that in-house in order to provide our members with such coverage. In 2021, we were able to bring that back in. Thanks, Cam. Next slide, please. So I'm excited to jump into the heart of the program, which is the Genesis Reciprocals. Um, we actively insure 117 municipalities, which include counties, towns, and summer villages. They obviously form the backbone of our expansive network, uh, and each member brings unique insights and challenges to the table, fostering a rich and diverse collaborative environment. Um, we've also partnered with seven school boards, recognizing the vital role education plays in community development. Our collaboration allows us to address the specific needs and concerns of our educational institutions. Um, our commitment to inclusivity it extends to 81 seniors housing facilities. So by incorporating the programs and needs of our elderly community members, we create a more comprehensive and supportive program that addresses a wide spectrum of demographics. Um, last but not least, our program also encompasses a city. So this singular urban entity contributes to Genesis on a larger scale, bringing in the intricate, intricate dynamics of our cityscape into a collaborative uh, effort. So really, in, in essence, Genesis is a vibrant ecosystem fueled by the active participation of diverse entities. Next slide, please. Um, our reciprocal insurance model offers significantly lower rates compared to the open market. And through our collaborative and mutually beneficial structure, members experience cost savings that translate into more competitive premiums. So this slide really highlights the economic advantage of choosing our reciprocal, showcasing um, the tangible benefits of a community-driven approach to risk management. Next slide, please. So as mentioned, I'm the manager of member services and uh, our commitment to providing exceptional customer service is reflected in our dedicated team of four member service representatives. Um, one of our key strategies for delivering outstanding customer service is uh, authorizing, offering personalized support through assigned assistance. So each member is paired with a dedicated representative who then becomes their primary point of contact. This personalized approach fosters a deeper understanding of individual needs, um, really leading to a more tailored experience and a heightened level uh, of customer satisfaction. Next slide, please. Um, so our claims process, um, this, when it comes to an insurance policy, the claims process and the claims experience is what you're essentially paying for. 
Um, and so what I can tell you about our claims process is it's going to be a little bit different than what your current provider provides. Um, what we do is that we have in-house claims adjusters. And so instead of using uh, independent adjusting firms and having them report back, the people that can have authorization to make the decisions and adjust the claims come right to you right from the beginning. There's currently 11 of us uh, in the province of Alberta that service all of our members here. Um, we also offer uh, online submission, uh, claims investigation, member assist, which is uh, an interesting in that you don't necessarily have to be putting forward a claim. You can contact us uh, with no cost to you and we can assist you with something that may be outside of insurance or under your deductible or maybe something that you want to take care of on your own but need a little guidance with. Um, we also have, uh, as Jesse alluded to before, we have a full uh, in-house legal team that takes care of some of our claims and reduces costs and premium savings that way, as well as, um, we'll go on here, we also have a, um, a risk management uh, conference and uh, that we put on, and I think it's actually coming up in a couple slides, so I'll talk a little bit more about that soon. Uh, my name is Mark Sosnowski. As mentioned, I'm a risk advisor with uh, Army Insurance. A little bit of background. Uh, previous to my role here, uh, I was the insurance consultant. I was the secondary insurance consultant with Alberta Municipalities on the Town of Drayton Valley's book, uh, being the lead uh, for about 13 months. I think that's important to note because, uh, you know, having worked with both municipal reciprocals, uh, being a small town boy myself, uh, I do understand the importance of uh, making sure that there's programs and stable uh, insurance available to have those programs uh, for all municipalities. We know the volunteer workforce uh, is getting much older uh, and it's making it a lot harder for these things to happen. And so, you know, when I approach uh, the, the services that we provide uh, for our members, I have these things in mind and it's a unique experience that I've had uh, to be able to uh, appreciate uh, those fi finer subtleties. Um, and either, even further than that, uh, before my time in insurance, I was a tooling, I sold machine tools, and the town of uh, uh, Drain Valley Machine was one of my best clients. So uh, I do have a significant history with the town of Drain Valley, um, and it was like a second home for a little bit, felt like. Moving on, uh, some of the risk management services we offer, as Mallory mentioned, there's four member service reps uh, that, are, that are separated throughout the province. We as well employ four risk advisors. Uh, these are risk advisors that are separate from your member service rep. Uh, each one of our members is, is uh, assigned a primary risk advisor. And from with that, uh, we offer many services which can help streamline uh, your operations, uh, reduce claims, and then also help uh, you know, a lot of these programs flourish. Uh, so we do things like coverage reviews. We take an overall look at your operations, whatever you may be doing, uh, we look for exposures, uh, we look for gaps in coverages, and we provide suggestions in either how to uh, transfer that risk through purchasing more insurance uh, or uh, mitigating against that risk by putting some risk management protocols into place. Uh, we, we offer uh, loss prevention training and seminars, uh, risk control inspections, contract reviews. Now, this is an important part of what we do on a day-to-day, -day, and it may tie in with some of the stuff that Canoe does. Uh, anytime you're entering into uh, a contract, a lease agreement, a service agreement, what have you, uh, you can send it to us uh, and we will review it and make sure that there's no insurance or indemnity clauses uh, which may be adverse towards the town. You want to make sure that everything's flowing in the right direction and that you have no gaps in coverage which may be opened up uh, with those types of agreements. Uh, we do facility appraisals and valuations. Uh, so not only do we do the risk control inspections ourselves on touring your properties and making sure that uh, they're not going to have any insurable losses uh, but we also make sure that they're insured to value. Uh, we analyze your claims, and, and again, we use that in making sure that you do not uh, have claims going forward. And then we have a ton of materials that are available to you, uh, which I will offer to the town, regardless whether you're my client or not, uh, because uh, municipal risk is universal. Uh, but we do have a, a huge library of bulletins uh, on various risk management topics for municipalities and community-related nonprofits. Uh, we also have checklists, so if you're doing an inspection, 
whether it's a weekly, monthly, or yearly inspection, save an arena. Uh, we have a, a checklist that uh, we can provide to you. Um, and then also uh, a new service that needs to be added onto the slide is all of our risk advisors are certified uh, playground instructors. Uh, now that could save just even a little bit of money every year. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's likely the municipality or one of its community uh, related nonprofits have playgrounds uh, and we can go out there and uh, do the inspection for you and make sure you have your annual at least done. Uh, and then that can save you a few hundred dollars at least in that. Um, so risk management is not just something we talk about at RMA Insurance. Uh, it's something that we do on a day to day. We invest heavily into it. Uh, you know, just even having the four risk advisors, uh, but uh, you know, also, you know, Cam is going to mention an incentive right away with with our risk control uh, seminar. That it, it's incredible uh, the work that we do. Uh, I was quite happy when I moved over here to see uh, you know the focus that they had on risk management, and you really do see the um, the proof is in the pudding as far as you know the results of increasing risk management protocols uh, and and making things safer and and easier for everybody to access. Thanks, Mark. Next slide, please. So in addition to the policies that you're seeing on your screen, RMA also partners with Aon, um, which unlocks a diverse range of markets for us. So the collaboration really empowers us to provide comprehensive coverage solutions for nearly any exposure that any of our members uh, or the town may encounter. Um, the slide emphasizes the strength of our strategic alliance and also highlights the breadth of opportunities and tailored uh, insurance solutions available for our clients. Slide. All right, as we mentioned a couple times already, we have what we call a risk pro conference. Um, now we do a couple different versions of this, some for our schools and for our communities. Um, our next one is coming up April 8th to 10th and it's going to be hosting, or it's going to be located at the River Cree here in the Edmonton region. Um, what we do is a, it's a, typically a two to three day event where we discuss risk management topics. We discuss um, some emerging trends in the insurance industry. Uh, we also discuss um, maybe some things that our, our friends over on the canoe side of the house are seeing in regards to supply chain and how that may be impacting you and how you can um, accommodate those types of scenarios. Also, we talk about claims um, and what we can do what your peers have done, and uh, maybe what we're seeing as kind of trending going forward. Um, if you attend these and you complete what we call your homework, you usually get some assignments, uh, members can receive 2% of their annual premium back as a rebate to spend on risk management um, activities or uh, risk management processes or something that you need to put in. Um, this can be something as simple as uh, buying winter tires for your fleet, uh, upgrading security surveillance or target hardening of your properties, things of that nature. Uh, it's pretty loose as to uh, how you can get that money back as long as you can show us that it's going towards a risk management process or activity. Um, this is gonna bring us to the end of a, our talk, discussion about RMA insurance and kind of the products and things that we offer. Is there any questions that you may have? Thank you very much for that. I'll open it up for questions. Deputy Mayor Clark, go ahead. Yes, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. A couple of questions for you. One, um, you know, one of the big risks we have as a municipality is our contractors, right? Um, you know, when, you, when you're reviewing contracts, you know, that's one thing, I guess, uh, to look for risk. But um, so we have our own insurance, contractors have their own, their own insurance, but how do, how do we ensure uh, that our contractors have adequate coverage? Do you guys do that sort of review or is that, is that on us? Yeah, yeah uh, that's included uh, in something that I do almost every day. Uh, we review certificates of, of insurance. We also, when we do the coverage reviews, we're looking at the overview of what you're doing, your operations. Um, myself, I have a, a specific background in construction insurance, which is very handy uh, because of the number of construction contracts that municipalities enter into, whether it's maintenance uh, or full out uh, new builds. Um, so yes, yeah, so on a, anything that you, your, any business venture that you're heading into, uh, you can actively engage us. Uh, we will make sure that there's the appropriate insurance in place. Uh, and advise if there's anything that we see that that's ill uh, that may uh, present a hazard to the town, and that includes not just oh the, the the limits aren't adequate or what have you. 
Um, you know, we have a number of uh, very seasoned insurance people in this office who have insurance experience with some of the insurers. Uh, and so, you know, there's certain cases where there, there might be an insurer that we know is a, is a adverse to paying claims or what have you, and we can give advice and guidance in that regard. So we, uh, we are we are very knowledgeable in that field, and that's something that we help all of our uh, members with, um, at least the ones that engage us. Perfect. One other question. Um, so when we create policy or bylaws, uh, you know, oftentimes we'll have a legal review. Um, I don't know how often we would have um, an insurance review. Um, are those sorts of things that you guys would be open to looking at bylaws and policies around, um, you know, any sort of risk, whether that's undue or unexpected? Yeah, um, with regards to policy, it's a little bit difficult for us. Uh, I'm not turning it away um, because with policy, it's very specific on, uh, you know, your operations, your budget, your, your people. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of information that we're just not privy to. However, what I can do is I can take a policy that a municipality or nonprofit puts in front of me and I can compare it against other policies that I see uh, and just as far as content goes to make sure you're covering all your bases. Uh, but, you know, as far as assigning staff and that kind of thing, uh, that's something that I, I just don't have the information to, to be involved with. Uh, but yes, I can, I can definitely assist with uh, policy drafting and review. Uh, and and uh, even because of uh, my, my working with over 300 municipalities and 3,500 nonprofits, um, I can tell you what, what has gone well and what has not gone well uh, with, with other policy and procedure and bylaw. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Ballas? Thank you. In regards to uh, group benefits, uh, what is your age restrictions? Um, we were supposed to have Jeff Nickel on this call, and I believe he's meeting with uh, the CAO uh, of the town tomorrow. Uh, but they're unfortunately traveling right now, so I, I I don't believe there are age restrictions on our benefit side of things. But Jeff would be best to answer that question. Um, but I'll make a note and pass that on so we can follow up with you folks um, around that uh, here shortly. Thank you. Any other questions? It doesn't look like there's, oh, Councillor McGee. Just uh, one final question. Has um, Canoe ever um, made a presentation at the um, AUMA or MA as they're calling it now? Uh, no, we've uh, we presented quite regularly and frequently with uh, with our conferences at the RMA, but we do not uh, partner or um, work collaboratively with uh, with AF. Okay, thanks. Okay, well, it doesn't look like we have any questions, any further questions on our side. So, uh, if there's anything else, uh, feel free to add uh, any additional information or let us know of anything. I think we're all good. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. We appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate you uh, taking the time and sharing everything with us. We'll have some further discussions here. And as you mentioned, our CAO, Mr. Wally Ferris, will be uh, meeting with one of your colleagues tomorrow, and uh, we will be in touch with you in the future. So stay warm. Thank you again. It was nice meeting you all, and uh, take care. Thank, thank you very much. No. Thank you. And that wraps up our delegations uh, for this morning. So before we jump into our decision items, I will call a 10 minute break and then we will reconvene. All right, we will reconvene at 10.08 a.m. Everybody is very efficient and on time uh, uh, this morning for sure. Uh, before we move into our decision items, we'll just maybe have a brief discussion of our last uh, delegation from Canoe Procurement of Canada and RMA Insurance uh, and then see if there's any business arising. Are there any uh, questions or comments from Council on the delegation this morning? Go ahead, Councilor McGee. Um, I was going to ask um, our CAO a question directing there, but I, I thought that's, uh, that's not a question for them. So uh, the question is now is that you have some experience on, on both sides and um, the question that that I had asked was 
what's different from our other provider. And the sense I got was we just can provide more, more services. And um, I thought, okay, so would you uh, alert your current provider as you go down this road or in, as a CEO, would you say, let's go have a look at it. And if it looks like we might switch them, of course we have to. So that's really my question is that where, where, where to next? Well, uh, thank you through the chair to you, Councillor McGee. The, um, so we don't have, there's two pieces to this. We don't have a procurement provider per se uh, right now, right? So if we, they don't, uh, not that I'm aware of, uh, if we go to tender or RFP, we, we do that on our own. I mean, we do, we do uh, seek legal advice, uh, of course, on, on the larger items. Um, so that's the procurement side on the, uh, um, on the insurance piece. Uh, yes, uh, we did provide a, a letter uh, to uh, AB Muni's indicating that uh, we're looking at uh, switching insurance providers. That letter can be rescinded at any time and not impact our uh, current insurance program with them. We did have to provide a one year's notice to AB municipalities and that's what we did. Oh, so we provided the notice. On what date? Like December? Okay, we provide it so then we have a year to decide, I guess, like, and kind of. Right, so the meetings tomorrow are, are to talk about um, our application process and what's involved. It, it's rather detailed. If you recall, I did talk to council about making sure that we wanted to go down this path because uh, it is a fair amount of, of work for administration as well as it is for RMA. Um, and uh, uh, given our insurance costs, uh, I think it's a it's a good exercise to go through. Absolutely, yeah. Just coming through a very difficult budget, I think we have to be mindful of our dollars and see what uh, I guess the best bang for our buck that we can be getting for our residents and community. So I think it's a very uh, good idea to be going down this road. Uh, so when we look at Canoe procurement and RMA, they're two separate or are they under the same umbrella? They're, they're all under RMA. Oh, they're all under RMA. But they're separate entities. Okay. And currently we don't have the, uh, as Tom had mentioned, we don't have the uh, ability to go through the procurement process right now with Alberta Munis. Um, if we were to go this way, then we would have that option. Uh, I know they mentioned that there's no fee, so this is just a service that they provide then? Is that what Canoe kind of on top of? That's, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I guess, so you'll be having the meeting, you'll be keeping us in the loop as this moves forward. If things work out and all of a sudden we find that, you know, when we look at that cost comparison that they're not, we're not saving any money, do we have the opportunity then to go back to Alberta Munis, even though we've given our notice? Is this kind of just, uh, we're exploring? That's what you do in this year or? So on the insurance side, on the, on the procurement side, I think that's a service we can, we can take advantage of, uh, regardless of, uh, uh, being, um, uh, on the insurance, like signing up for the insurance, but we'll clarify that tomorrow. Um, and if we, uh, if we're approved by RMA insurance, once our applications are complete, uh, we would bring that back to council. That will be a council decision, uh, and we'll we'll indicate the, the you know, our current costs of insurance with AB Munis versus RMA, and and council will be provided all the information that we have to make that decision. Okay, Councillor Ballas. Thank you. The only thing I didn't hear them mention while we were uh, first was was the uh, utilities. And I, I'm not sure if they offer a program for natural gas and power or electricity or not, but maybe that's something we could investigate. Thank you through the chair to you, Councillor Ballas. I believe that uh, there was a, a, a note on one of the slides that talked about utilities. I'm not overly familiar with canoe procurement piece of, of uh, their business, so I haven't personally used uh, used them at, at this point in time, but we can we can ask for clarification around that. Okay, any other comments or questions? 
No. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We'll wait for that to come back and we'll move forward with that. We'll jump into uh, 9.1, which is our 1st and only decision item on the agenda this morning, uh, which is governance and priorities committees. And this is Mr. Wally Ferris is going to be presenting and sharing this with us this morning. Thank you, your worship. Uh, so. Lots of discussion uh, since I've been here around uh, committees and committees of council. And uh, this report is to uh, recommend a reinstatement of the governance and priorities uh, or GMP meetings. Uh, the function of, uh, of this committee is to allow for discussion in order to bring uh, recommendations to council for final consideration and decision. Uh, the membership of the GMP committee shall consist of all members of council. Uh, uh, GMP committee shall be held monthly in the council chambers commence at 9 a.m. on alternating Wednesdays between the first and second council meeting of the month, unless notice is otherwise given in accordance with the MGA uh, that the committee will be held in an alternate location or time. Uh, the exception to this will be the first uh, committee meeting, which will be held on January 31st. Uh, subject to uh, the MGA, uh, the GMP may consider any manner, any matter that council may consider. Uh, the committee may conduct non statutory public hearings, receive delegations and submissions, uh, such as that we just received. It would have been a good idea to have that go to uh, GMP, uh, meet with other municipalities and levels of government, and provide instructions and direction to town administration. The GMP committee may not pass a bylaw or, re or resolution that must be passed by council as outlined in the MGA. From time to time, the GMP may be canceled if there are not enough agenda items to warrant the expense of a meeting. Cancellation of a meeting will follow the same process for canceling a meeting of council. Uh, the terms of reference is attached and uh, has been combined with uh, policy C-4-14. Therefore, the recommendation is to approve the new terms of reference and rescind policy C0414. Uh, the financial implications are uh, roughly uh, about $1,200 per meeting, depending on uh, the length of the meeting. Uh, no real organizational impacts other than there's an additional committee meeting. And uh, so therefore, um, administration respectfully recommends that council reinstate the Governance and Priorities Committee to meet monthly at 9 a.m. at the Civic Center. And that council approve the attached council and committee proposed schedule. And that council adopt the attached terms of reference for the GMP committee. And that council rescind policy C-04-14. With that, I'm happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much for that. Any questions? Go ahead, Councillor Clark. Well, I just wanted to clarify the 1176 per meeting. Um, so, as it stands, we have a current, currently three council meetings per month, right? Two. Two? Okay. So, I was thinking that this was going to be just replacing a council meeting, but okay. Thank you. Um, so, there is the uh, council and committee meeting schedule attached. So, the green is the GNP, and then the yellow are um, every second week the regular council. So then we would have three. I think this is what we did in the past as well. Any other questions? Councillor Ballas? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Councillor Lark that I'm not sure if we need two regular and, and one GMP. If uh, one regular meeting cannot be replaced by a GMP, and, and we have one regular a month and one GMP a month. I think Colin was thinking there was three council a month, but there's only two. Okay. Okay. Do we need to? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, for myself, I think that um, it would be nice maybe to try it out and see how it goes. I know that uh, when we used to have the governance and priority meetings in the past, that we did have the one GNP and the two council meetings, and we seem to always have a full agenda. But since we switched to the only the two council meetings, uh, they would be quite lengthy uh, 
lengthy days for us and a lot of times there would be agenda items that would get bumped and wouldn't come and so on so um, maybe I would suggest that if we try it out for a couple months and see how it goes and then we have the option maybe if it's not we can revisit this and, or if you could think of anything else Mr. Ferris too that might help. Uh, thank you uh, Madam Mayor. No I uh, nothing else to really add other than um, uh, I think you're correct. I think the length of some of the council meetings will be reduced so the financial impact of almost $1,200 a meeting based on a four hour meeting. I think at the end of the day, it might increase a little bit, but um, uh, GMP meetings provide um, a less formal atmosphere to have a conversation, uh, in particular around bylaws. Um, you know, council should see a bylaw uh, to GMP meeting first uh, to make sure it's headed in the right direction. Uh, instead of uh, a council meeting where you have to have first or second reading. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits to that to generally discuss uh, uh, an item such as what we just had. And so at a GMP meeting, uh, we could have kept um, um, the uh, RMA folks on the, on the line and had um, a, a much more robust discussion uh, uh, around uh, what's being proposed. Thank you. I think Councillor Evans, did you have a question? No. Okay. Councillor Gamana? Thank you. Uh, no, I, I agree with uh, Mayor's, uh, Mayor's comments there. Um, I, I think it was, for me, it was uh, nice to uh, win when we had the GNP and trying to understand um, the items that are coming um, to the next council, um, as well as have a general discussion um, understanding the, the direction, um, but saying that um, it was solely just information, there's no decisions made, um, which we come to a council meeting and then we make the decision. My only question is that, you know, this is publicly advertised, but are we going to stream this live as well? GNPs. Uh, I don't believe that we are gonna stream the GMP meetings. We'll continue to stream live the council meetings. Reason for that, we are not streaming. Uh, just, just the 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 less formal discussion um, that that we have at GMP meetings and um, um, and staff costs. Thank you. And typically, the motions then decisions. There's no decisions made there, so those decisions and motions come now to a council meeting. So that's where the decisions happen. Uh, if there's no other further comments or question, is there a member of council that would like to make a motion? Councillor McGee? Uh, I, I would make a, a motion, um, but before I do that, uh, the uh, I think Councillor Gomanis' question was about streaming, um, but and I'm not sure if it got answered is in the sense of uh, it's it's still a it's still a public meeting. Uh, through the chair to you, Councillor McGee, yes, it's still a public meeting. It'll be advertised like uh, like a council meeting and the public is uh, certainly welcome to attend. Good, thank you. Um, I would uh, make a motion to the council reinstate the governance and priorities committee to meet monthly at 9 a.m. at the Civic Center and that council approve the attached council and committee proposed schedule and that council adopt the attached terms of reference for the GMP committee and the council rescind Policy C0414. Thank you very much for that motion. Any comment, question, or debate on the motion? Then I'll ask all in favor. <laughs> and that is carried. You had your hand. Oh, oh, okay. All opposed? That is carried. Okay, that is our first and only decision item. I think before we move into closed, uh, we'll jump to our department and council reports this morning. We'll start with 10.1, Ms. Shelley Terry, come on down for Municipal Service Department report, your first of 2024. Welcome, Happy New Year and all that. Good morning, Madam Mayor and members of council and Happy New Year. Good morning. <laughs> Um, so I'll start with the utilities update. Um, staff completed inventory updates for wastewater, water plant distribution and collection parts as part of the 2023 year end fi or financial audit. 
Staff have ordered bottles to complete semi-annual sampling as per our regulatory sampling requirements. 2023 annual report is currently being worked on by staff and needs to be submitted to AEPA by February 29th, 2024. A job posting will soon be posted for the utilities manager position. I can confirm now that it has been posted. Um, currently, we are working on creating a job description for the VAC truck operator in hopes to get this position filled as soon as possible. Staff are actively looking into policies to see what should be created and policies that may need to be updated. Management is working hard on creating a drought management plan in the event we experience a drought in the spring summer months. Um, of 2024. This plan will consist of risks that we sh could potentially see in the event of a drought and mitigation tactics that we could trigger in the event of an emergency situation. Staff are currently looking at creating a water restriction policy in the event we would need to trigger a water rest restriction within the municipality. Acute lethality sampling for wastewater is scheduled for end of January. And our Sager pilot continues to perform well. Staff conducted an acute lethality sample on the pilot effluent water and the sample passed with zero mortalities. Unfortunately, with the cold water event, we did experience some freezing of our water lines. So we're currently working on mitigating that. Um, Public Works staff worked on to be park cleanup and are still working on tree removal, but are almost completed with this work. Staff will be flagging any stumps to prevent tripping hazards for our public until we can complete some stump removal work come spring summer. With the lack of snow getting this work done in 2023 was successful and helped keep the staff working during this difficult time. Staff have been working on installation of new signage at the new school and locations to be ready for school opening of January 10th. That's been completed. I'm sorry when I made the report, it was still in progress. Um, locates are ongoing throughout town um, as construction is still ongoing. Um, public Works staff are working with parks to do some tree cleanup in parks to open line of sites in some areas throughout town for public safety reasons. Um, public Works assisted parks with hauling snow for the Omniplex to the ODR for ice making. They no longer have to help with that because we have enough snow now. Um, public Works staff uh, will You'd be using the graders to help smooth out the tops of our berms on our lagoons at the wastewater treatment facility. This will help mobility for utility staff to navigate safely on the berms around the lagoons to conduct maintenance work and sampling. Public Works staff um, will be assisting utilities to clean up our parts storage site for distribution and collection parts. Um, and management of Public Works is going through our policies and looking for any that we need to create and update. Um, Snow, of course, fell. It wasn't in this report because that hadn't happened yet. Um, so staff is out doing snow removal today in priority one routes. I just wanted to let council know with the upcoming cold temperatures within our policy, it says that minus 30, our equipment will shut down due to the strain on the equipment. So I think that um, I'll work with communications to get some key messaging out for you guys to, to talk to the public in the event you have any, they have any questions. Um, Park staff are working on getting the downtown rink flooded for the fire and ice event in February. They successfully got one flood done and, and it looks great. Um, they'll continue to work on that ice to get it ready for that event. Um, they've also been ongoing with snow removal right now. So they've been um, getting all of our trails and sidewalks completed for snow removal event. Staff have been working on removal of black knot. We've seen an increase of black knot on some of our cherry trees throughout town. So staff's been removing that um, so the disease doesn't spread further. Staff are working on locating rain barrels to support watering flowers throughout our drought conditions. Um, if that happens this summer, um, we don't know what it's going to look like yet, but um, we want to prepare to be able to still maintain that service for the town. Staff will be um, starting inspections on the areas surrounding fire hydrants throughout town to remove any trees and grass restricting visibility. Um, staff are working on tree pruning throughout our green spaces in town. That's definitely slowed down since the snow events have occurred. Um, but staff will be working with Public Works as well to enhance our line of sites at our parks facility or parks green spaces. Sorry, um, engineering um, a storage container is being built to safely store um, propane tanks that come to us. Um, leachate monitoring is ongoing and the 2023 landfill annual report is currently being worked on. Submission of this is due April 2024. 
um, and public consultation for approval re renewal had sorry approval renewal has started now um, is currently underway and will continue until the beginning of February for lateral expansion of our future use of the landfill. Um, I did have a meeting about, um, it's not in here, but I just had a meeting about our distribution project. So as of Thursday, we'll be sending in a robot in the reservoir to um, uh, confirm what our piping looks like on the Southeast pressure zone. So that, that's gonna be conducted this Thursday. Um, we have done our geotech analysis and the quality of the ground looks good for directional drilling instead of an open cut um, to put in the water line pipe. And Wally and I have a meeting with the landowner across from the water plant on January 17th to discuss the work that's going to be coming up. Um, for the 50 Ave, I do have a meeting tomorrow for 50 Ave. Um, I did get an update that ADCO has got most of their design done for the realignment of the gas lines that are conflicting our design. So that's a positive. I'll see where that is at tomorrow and give you guys an update on the next department report. And I'll open it up for questions. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Councilor Evans, it looks like you have a question. Thank you. Uh, just a couple, Shelley. Yeah. Um, 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 uh, the mitigation tactics in case of an emergency uh, event. Can you expand on that just a little bit? What, uh, what are you looking at doing? Yeah, thank you for, for the question. So um, the biggest one is to get a, a water restriction policy in place um, so that we can control what um, usage is being used for watering grass and flowers and, and things like that. So we'll have different stages um, within our policy that we'll bring to council for decision um, based off what our river level is at um, and then we'll trigger those as we need to um, as well as looking at if the river dropped enough I mean we were lucky that last winter the ice cut a really good channel through the sandbar that was cutting us off um, and increased our levels quite a bit um, so we we didn't see much of a concern this year when we when flows were happening in the river but we do want to be prepared if that does drop and and our uh, I know that Transalt is I've been in discussion with them as well and their their levels are great within the reservoirs and they're still they they don't see any issue yet but they are preparing for that as well um, but if that river dropped we need to figure out how to get the water to us um, so I have reached out to the county and and talked about pumps if we ever needed that to get the water in so that we could keep supplying water to the town. Um, and then just some some risk management based off our drinking water safety plan, um, which we already have in place. We just kind of got to um, refine it a little bit. Gotcha. Thanks for that. No problem. One more. You betcha. Uh, your SAGR system uh, seems to be going well. Um, are, are you are you testing daily there or do you have constant testing going on there or how often do you test? Um, we do weekly sampling with our regular sampling regime. Um, so gotcha. we're, we're testing with our effluent quality um, and our influent qualities so that we can kind of trend everything properly with, with the Sager pilot. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're not doing it daily. We're yeah. checking on it daily, of course, but yeah. we, don't, we don't require to do it daily at this point. I, I, I'm just curious to see how that performs in this very cold weather. Yeah, we are very curious yeah, as well. Because uh, like, as I, as I told you, when I looked at it years ago in Saskatchewan, that was the only beef that they had was that it, it uh, the, uh, the uh, quality dropped. It wasn't as, as effective, which is expected to a certain extent with, with any wastewater um, treatment system but yeah I'll be curious to see next week what you what you come up with and okay. if you're seeing a, a, a significant drop or not okay that's it for me thank you thank you Councillor Ballas thank you <clears throat> like not can be a very serious issue and uh, when I lived in Red Deer uh, we ran into that work and I got to the point where we had to remove our trees uh, to contain it, to control it. Uh, I'm just curious as if you feel confident that by removing black rot that you're going to have it controlled. 
So we did just, or thank you for the question. Sorry. Um, we did discuss this with our arborist and he has given us, um, quite a bit of training on how to remove it without killing the trees and without the continue of further spread. Um, so we're confident we can, we can get ahead of it, but we, we're definitely monitoring the situation closely. Mr. Gamana. Thank you. Um, could be a question for you, Shelly, or probably for Atom as well. Um, regarding the, the snow removal on the sidewalks, um, some sidewalks we do, but there's other, I've got a couple of phone calls that some parts hasn't been done. So I was wondering how um, we make sure that, you know, for our residents that it's, it's clear that you know, they can walk without any safety issues. I'm sorry, Councillor Gamana, I couldn't quite hear um, the end of your question. No, uh, so the, the parts that we are we are doing, you know, it's it's been done, but there's parts that residents should do, but it's they have they have not been done. Some parts, right? Um, so I'm assuming how because um, I've already got a couple of phone calls saying that uh, we are slippery and and uh, parts of some uh, sidewalks hasn't been done. Uh, thank you. I, I believe I understand the question. So through the chair to you, Councillor Gamana, I believe that um, uh, we work, uh, our bylaw and our um, uh, CPO work on a complaint basis right now. So if we receive a complaint that an area in front of, say, my house has not been shoveled, um, then I believe that bylaw or CPO would get a hold of me, um, give me um, a bit of time to uh, to get that done. If not, I believe that uh, we can uh, we can go and uh, do that and then um, um, seek reimbursement from the resident. So I think the current bylaw indicates 48 hours to to uh, for individuals to to clear the sidewalk in front of their house. And if not, if there's a complaint received, um, then we'll go out and and um, uh, contact a resident. But I'm going to just turn around and talk to the chief here to make sure I get that right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Councilor McGee. But just on that note, we'll, we'll quickly find out uh, what, where our problems are, uh, where we, we really didn't know. I, uh, as an example, I walked from the hospital to home hardware and there's a long sidewalk there that's not ours. Could be home hardware. I don't know, but we'll find out quickly, probably within the next week. Um, that isn't my question. The question I have uh, for Shelley, um, first off, is the um, utilities manager position. Um, was that was that a position that you held? Um, yeah. Sorry. Thank you for the question. Yes, that's correct. That was my position. And is, is uh, would you when you post it? Of course, you could be in house. You may have in house people that would apply or. Absolutely, I, I do have one candidate in house that will be applying. Um, but we did post it internal and external. Um, okay, uh, the level of the water in the North Saskatchewan, I think that's a serious issue. Um, when you talk about pumps and things like that, that's a, a whole department of fisheries and it's a pretty big deal to start fiddling in the North Saskatchewan. We know that um, we're prepared to, to sort of think through that. So our water act license actually allows us to pump from the river and, and we are reviewing um, that fully. They, they know of our situation. So they allowed that within our water act when we did the raw water pump station build allowed us to, to enact pump pulling directly from the river. Um, we are looking at, we're going to have to talk to our provincial entities to discuss in a drought situation. Would they allow that? So those are kind of some of the things that we're working through within this within this plan. Yeah, that's great. Um, in uh, the first uh, number for public works, um, you talked about uh, the the Bee Park and um, was successful and helped keep the staff working during this difficult time. And I was thinking, did somebody pass away or? No, just with not having any snow, <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit slow. They were kind it's of a difficult time. We call that. Yeah, I call not that a difficult time. Snow. Yeah, <laughs> we want snow. <laughs> I just thought it was a funny way to put it. I thought, okay, the boys are sitting in the shop. They're all trying to get their engines going, right? 
Okay. Um, fire and ice. We're we're going to get ready for that. Rain barrels. I thought was a good idea. Um, that's all I have. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. A couple of questions. Um, I saw Public Works moving signs uh, around El Dorado. There, that was good. Uh, I do have a question around the Beehive and Outreach. I can't remember what we landed on there for school zone. Um, what did we land on there? I, I did send out an email to you guys. I hadn't got a response back yet. So um, it doesn't, within the Traffic Act, it, it doesn't designate that a school zone. However, the CAO does have the authority to designate a school zone there if, if he chooses to with, with your guys' decision. Um, and and enforcement was was on board with that as well. So it's just kind of waiting for your guys' response back to that. Okay, thank you. Um, and then just the question around the letter from the county on 50th Ave and Range Road 73 there. Um, you did go take a peek and you're going to be meeting with the county at some point. Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Uh, so just a couple for me. Uh, glad to hear that we're preparing and planning for any potential risk that may come this year. It's great to hear that we're getting ahead of it and that we're also communicating and working with the county uh, for plans. So thank you for doing that. Uh, so when it comes to our snow removal, um, was today the first day or yesterday was the first day that they were kind of out there that our, we triggered our, our policy? Uh, so on Monday they were out. Um, so they, they attempted to roll some of the roads on Monday because we did hit that just hit that five centimeter trigger. Um, but they were unable to get more than a foot um, rolled up because a lot of it had blown off the roads. Um, so they worked on just rolling what they could out. Um, and then uh, then we started getting snow again. So we pulled back until the snow slowed down and, and started again this evening. Or last last night, sorry. Oh, so last night. So crews would have been out in priority one areas last night. Correct. And I guess the reason why I'm asking is because the priority areas didn't look like they were done this morning. So then I'm assuming because they started last night and it was snowing all night that that's kind of what happened. So then do they go out again throughout the day down the priority one or how is kind of the next step going so, forward? So they focused on the downtown area last night just due to the high volumes of traffic to keep that um, to keep the crews working and not having to deal with the traffic along the roads. Um, so that's what they focused on last night. And this morning they started on 50th and 50th at 6 a.m. Okay, at 6 a.m. It's just because I didn't notice the school coming up from uh, St. Anthony's and up to 50th wasn't done. So I just wanted to know at what point did we go out prior to the 6 a.m. or after or kind of what, so then we can communicate that, right? Which, which school are you? St. Anthony's? Oh, they're on priority two route. Oh, though. priority two? Yep. Okay, so they're priority. Okay, thank yep. you for that. Um, so they're priority two. Um, and then going forward, do we do a full town sweep now that we've got this much snow, or is it just the priority one and two? I, I believe that we have hit our triggers to do a full town cleanup. Um, I will discuss with the public works manager and get back to you on that. Um, okay. But they'll be doing definitely priority one, two, and I believe three routes. Um, but with the cold weather coming, they're going to have I to pull have. back a little bit and then restart on, on Monday. On Monday. Okay. And all that will be communicated, I guess, as we're going out. So that if people are wondering, you know, are they going to do my call to sac or my street that we'll be saying, like you said, due to the cold weather, we'll be taking a break and then we'll be commencing again on Monday and things Correct. like that. Yep. We will be getting a comms piece out today again. Oh, okay. Perfect. And then I guess the same would be for um, post in regards to our rinks. You talked about how fantastic they are and things like that. I don't imagine anyone's going to be using them over the next few days, but will we pick up that next week, that comms piece to let them know how amazing they are and if they want to be used and things like that? Yeah, we can absolutely put a post out there for sure. Uh, the ODR is open. It, it's ODR. been open since before Christmas, um, but the downtown rink, it's not quite there yet. So we're okay. going to have to do a few more floods, but with the cold coming, we, we can't flood during that or the ice just cracks. So. We'll wait until Monday and most likely do another flood. Do that. And then maybe once you do that, then a post will go with both of our outdoor rinks or yep. something like that. Just to, we talked a little bit yesterday about highlighting kind of all of our assets and, and a little bit of things. So I guess that's where my question was just to let people know that what we kind of have going on. I know that um, a couple people were excited to be using the uh, uh, outdoor rink over the Christmas holidays. I know there was a couple that showed up on Christmas Eve and then I think there was a sign that said, please do not go on and one family actually went and then they seen the sign after they, they quickly sent me a picture and said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. We immediately got off, but we didn't see the sign. So I thought, well, that was nice, but they really appreciate it. Uh, what I'd heard that the rinks were ready over the holidays. So thank you for that. No problem. 
And I don't think there's any other questions. Oh, you got one more question. Go ahead. Councilor Evans. Uh, the, uh, storage container being built at the landfill. What's 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 that look like? It's 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 basically just a chain link fence that that kind of contains them in one spot. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I I was just going to uh, um, let you know and actually Tom as well that at, at the the last auction here in town they had a couple of uh, of uh, storage containers with uh, doors on the side of them. They all went for eight to nine thousand. I'm not sure what you had budgeted. I couldn't remember. I was going to look back, but uh, that's not a bad deal for a storage container with four doors on the side of it for this kind of stuff. That's it. Thank you very much for your report. We'll move along to 10.2. Mr. Hans von Klaveren for Community and Recreation Services Department report. Good morning, happy new years and welcome. Thank you, Mayor Dodds and uh, through to you at the address of council, of course, as well, this report. So in ECDC, we uh, decided to give you some extra information about the whole year in the addition to the reporting. So you can see those stats and if there's any questions later on, you can have, of course ask. Um, we did sign the affordability grant as well uh, for the uh, year 2024 that has to be done here in January. Uh, we did have some questions. It took a little bit longer to sort out with all the other daycare facilities as well uh, throughout the province because there are some changes in there, but we were satisfied with uh, how that turned out. So we signed for a year. Uh, we know there's a cost framing, uh, let's say, coming up for 2026, which will be more changes even to daycare funding with the province. But we are sure we can uh, do the things we do uh, in the correct way and the financing is uh, finalized. For FCSS, um, one of the items in there that you see is uh, we are recruiting volunteers for the 2023 Community Volunteer Income Tax Program. Uh, you heard already earlier, of course, from uh, Mr. Charlie Miner that he was part of that, but we always look for uh, people to help out with that uh, program because we support, uh, of course, our fam uh, families and individuals with, uh, let's say, the more uh, robust or simple uh, tax uh, revenue filing. Uh, in our community, uh, if anybody wants to help out with that, and uh, you're invited to come to uh, the uh, Rotary House and talk with FCSS staff members to volunteer there. Um, we started, of course, uh, last year already with information on the resource uh, navigation program and doing that with uh, both the Wishing Wells or with the seniors, but uh, also with Warming Heart Center, where we provide that service for our homeless community. Uh, and we bring that also now to the landfill where we basically see the biggest congregation of homeless people that need those support. So that's uh, how we reach out and support uh, our community members to make sure that they get the resources that they uh, require. In the Omniplex, um, we've done a good sale at the end of the year for our uh, memberships, uh, on our memberships on the Total Fitness uh, Center. Uh, people that just buy the fitness pass, we went from 109 to 113. That doesn't look like a big jump, but it's a good one, of course. But the biggest jump we see in the combined pass that we started this year, uh, and that's combined pass for pool and uh, fitness. Mm -hmm. So people uh, see the value, of course, of our new facility close by and buy a combined pass. And we saw a big jump in that. The exact number I don't have, but uh, we are happy to see that. So it was a successful campaign. Uh, it says the oilman uh, curling bond spiel is taking place this weekend. It was last weekend, so January 5 to 7. Uh, and those events are always big, and uh, it's happy to uh, see, of course, our facility being utilized. One thing that I sure want to point out is the last one that uh, you see over there. That's the curling provincials. The pr our preparations with uh, the organizations underway. That's a big thing. It's for the U20 uh, uh, in curling, and that takes place March 5 to 10 uh, in this year. Um, don't mix it up with basically with another provincials that we already uh, have planned as well. That's February uh, 21st to the 24th. It's Frank Maddock. So they have a school athletic program that they hosting provincial curlings as well. So it's great to see our facility utilized for that. In the pool, everybody knows that we are currently in a shutdown. That shutdown was planned at the uh, beginning, basically before the end of the warranty period. So at the end of our first year of operation. Uh, it's this week. Uh, we are now in a cold snap. I know everybody's uh, like, ah, oh, it's pretty chilly. We wanted to have it earlier. 
because then we could have seen how our systems exactly would respond to it. So we see that right now, of course, uh, we might see a couple of things that we cannot sort out completely 100%, uh, but our service won't be impacted by that if we have to address something a little bit later than uh, this week. So Sunday, we will be uh, for sure open again for the public. Um, it's good to work with our uh, biggest partner, uh, Chandos, and uh, basically after this first year, we have to sit down and really look at each other and saying, okay, this was great, but what is still extended in our expectation, how it should work uh, after this. So uh, we're happy to see that things are progressing. Community services, uh, like our my colleague Terry uh, said already as well, of course, uh, we have the uh, family day event on Sunday, February 18th happening uh, with EBPR doing the fire and ice again uh, coming up. Um, we didn't do it last year, but again, this year we're doing that and, and looking really forward for that event. Uh, like we said, the cold snap, the weather related uh, items in community services is important to mention that uh, as of today, the warming hearts, our daytime uh, shelter is open longer hours. So we are now back to back with uh, the, the shelter pots. So that means that our uh, homeless uh, community members basically have a 24 hour uh, support and in, in being in a situation that they are safe. We saw last night, this night, uh, 10 people using the shelter pots. We also know that sometimes in these cold snaps, people utilize, let's say the locations that they have and found to hunker down for those uh, very cold times. But uh, we are uh, happy and, and, and it's good, of course, that we work with community members uh, and those organizations that make sure that we have 24 hour shelter, which might go into the weekend as well um, because we do that with minus 20 including the wind chill in the daytime maximum temperature and we'll most likely see that into the weekend um with that basically most uh, things are uh, cold related as well like uh, in public works but uh, any questions please ask thank you very much for your report any questions Councillor Gamana? thank you thank you hans um Regarding the, the, the pool, I guess, you know, you're doing the uh, maintenance and testing and warranty work. Um, we had a couple of issues uh, with the steam room and a couple of other things. How are they coming along? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gimena, and through to the uh, chair. So, yeah, that was really bone of contention with uh, how that uh, was uh, played out in the end. We are now installing it again. The electricity was the issue, uh, let's say, a week ago when we had the steam uh, room unit in place. The generator was in place again. Uh, right now, it's being installed with the electricity. So right now, uh, when we open up on Sunday, it will be operational again. Uh, but it was very, let's say, uh, disconcerting that we, it took this long. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Clark? One question, um, the score clock, where are we at with the score clock in the Omniplex? Thank you for that question and through the chair to the rest of council as well. So the score clock is now in place. We have it here delivered. It's in storage uh, with us. We said already in an earlier, uh, say, update in our uh, department report that um, based on the usage, we are installing it in April or let's say after the season so we can do it off ice. Uh, on one hand, it's better, of course, and we were hoping to do it in Christmas time or just before, but based on the, our usage uh, of our community groups, uh, it's been now happening or it will happening in April. Uh, our score clock so far that we have hasn't had uh, big uh, hiccups, so we have not had any, let's say, major interruptions on the, the current score clock. Uh, Councillor McGee? Just to understand the... Um situation with our uh, our unhoused um when you talk about 24 hour shelter that would mean that you have the ability uh, to be at the pods if you're able to get in to a room there and then from there you can quickly go down to warming hearts and you're there until you can go back to the pods is that what you mean by 24 hours thank you for that question and clarification that's exactly correct um, and our, our campers uh, at the at the landfill, as it, do, do, are we monitoring them, or is anybody to just do a drive by? And what's what's our RCMP doing, or any of those things? 
I see already our CEO turning around. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for the question. Um, our staff are going out there on a weekly basis to meet with them and, and talk to them to make sure that they're, they're doing all right. So we're going out there frequently. Right, so as we, we, we've got four days of 30 minus 30, so would we up that game or we do, they just know we're here. If they need us, let us know and we'll figure it out. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Uh, oh, Councillor Evans, go ahead. If I may. Um, I just see F FCSS is starting to uh, uh, go out to that location as part of the, as part of the outreach uh, for these folks, and and now we've we've got staff checking on them weekly. I'm just curious about our budget for this stuff. Is this increasing the the budget significantly at all, or have we kind of um, done less at the Warming Heart Center and and putting those, those hours towards this other location. Um, uh, simply because I, I, I know our budget is established and limited more or less to what we've been given by the province. I'm just uh, concerned that we're seeing some budget creep here maybe. Thank you, Councillor Evans for the question and through the chair again to the rest of council. So um, for budgetary questions, of course, in the sense of we have to staff are already working at FCSS. So they do resource navigation, work with other community partners as well. The time that they are, of course, at the uh, Rotary House, where they normally, let's say, invite people to come over. Yes, there will be a little bit less time over there. There's also always staff at the Rotary House uh, available to say, hey, at a later time or at another moment, somebody can help out over there. But that's the staff that goes out to both Warming Hearts and uh, in this case, also to the landfill. Um, so it's a little bit of, uh, let's say, divide and conquer uh, in the sense of when people can reach out to uh, our staff, but we will help out everybody at that moment. Our community partners, that's of course another one when we invite other groups to come out as well. It's an ask extra most likely for them to come out and help, uh, let's say, at the landfill if they come out or to do a session, for instance, at Warming Hearts. But they are willing, really good in helping out additional time because this really reaches out to the people that need it so yeah thank you we see not yet a burden on our let's say resources and finances but for sure it's something to monitor that and thank you for pointing that out are we still receiving uh reports from uh the organizations that are taking on the pods in the warming center to ensure that they're i guess fulfilling the criteria of the grant dollars that are being used Thank you for that question and yes that's correct uh, that's part of our uh, let's say mandate for that funding that we still do that on a daily basis so that's still ongoing absolutely okay perfect well thank you very much for your report uh, fantastic news on the pool and the gym pass uh, increase in the utilization i think that's fantastic that the community is celebrating the amazing pool that we built in 2023 and that it's uh, getting the full use it is a beautiful uh, center and uh, it's nice to hear that everybody's using that and also thank you again for your help with the community recognition and and helping us uh, uh, put that all together i know we changed up a little bit and um, it, the little pressure's on the council now but uh, i know you like to put your final touch on that so i appreciate the help that you uh, give us and thank you for recognizing all the individuals in the community as well uh, so that is it for um, administrative reports we'll jump to our council reports and first up is Councillor Ballas uh, Councillor Ballas on um, <laughs> December 14th uh, Great Valley Hospitality Tourism Association also the airport uh, Meeting that evening, and then on the 15th, we had budget. On the 15th, the Aurora Parade. 22nd, we had the uh, MLA open house. Uh, the only one I did not have in my report here is the uh, Youth Advisory Committee, which we had a strategic meeting on Saturday. And uh, it was a long, interesting meeting. And uh, Perhaps it's something that I'll bring to a GMP and look at the uh, 
terms of reference in, in regards to the youth advisory committee as to exactly what do we want to see from them? What is their role? Because there seems to be a little bit of confusion there, whether it's going to be just an information group, an advocacy group, is there going to be any action orientated group? So I, I think we have to look at the terms of reference and just get some clarification as to exactly what do we want to see from the youth advisory committee. But we'll bring that up at a GP. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Councilor Sheriff. So um, did I have very much going on during Christmas? Um, yesterday we had uh, a council workshop and uh, discussed a little bit about education and economic development. Um, council meeting today and then tomorrow I have a Zoom meeting with the uh, West Central Airship um, Society. And um, I was talking, well, I just got an email from Yvonne and they're looking into putting one or two, um, they're like micro sensors for air monitoring somewhere within the community. So, I don't know, I'll get a little bit more information about it tomorrow and maybe that's something we can talk about. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Evans, are you ready? Switching things up a bit here. Yeah, well, I, there was only four here, so I thought I'd squeeze you guys in. Okay, <laughs> stay on my toes here. Uh, yeah, not a lot to uh, to report. Uh, December 19th, we had a sustain sustainability committee uh, meeting. Um, we're also working on our terms of reference. We'll, we'll bring some to the next one. Uh, we're currently just relying on the existing uh, one that's a couple of years old. We also looked at to, to see if we could possibly start uh, um, bringing our own uh, uh, food bank collection box to, to pretty much any town um, events. Uh, so we're working with Public Works, see if they can put something together for us that we can simply wheel out there every time. Uh, we thought that was a good sort of general um, help to the community that anybody and everybody has access to. So uh, then the December 5th uh, budget meet, or December 15th, excuse me, budget meeting. And then, uh, yeah, the January 9th economic development uh, workshop, which I thought was well worthwhile, a lot of good information there. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilor McGee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the report that uh, that's before you, I think, speaks for itself. The two things that I would mention, uh, one is the um, special budget meeting. Uh, I thought uh, coming together as, as a council, uh, getting through that budget was very, very difficult, but we uh, we managed it and we and we did it together. So I'm I'm really uh, really proud of this group. Um, secondly, the free press was out, and two things came out of that for me. Uh, your discussion uh, with the um, what happened last year, but the fact that we are going to try to work better and harder uh, to develop a relationship with the county. Um, I noted in their response, they, they said the same thing. And so I think that's tremendous. If we can continue that that piece in the new year to uh, be more collaborative and work together, I think it's just, uh, it's great news. And that's all I have. Perfect, thank you very much, Councillor Gamana. Thank you, uh, as mentioned, uh, on 15th, uh, we had the budget meeting. Um, 19th uh, had the Health Foundation meeting, just was a little bit of a Christmas gathering and um, less official stuff, but no uh, gathering. So it was uh, nice to um, have a, a gathering like that with uh, the committee. Um, 22nd, I uh, had the opportunity to go to the MLA open house as well and had a chat with our MLA. Uh, 20th, uh, Drake Street unveiling. Um, and on the 9th, um, uh, Council Workshop uh, for Education and Economic Development, that was yesterday. Um, I think we need to have a few more of those to figure out where we are heading with our economic development and education, in my mind. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. <laughs> yeah, uh, repeating a bunch of things here, but uh, the budget deliberations. Uh, APBR received the orientation uh, along with Councillor Evans from Sandra Banner just prior to Christmas there. Um, excited to get going with EPBR. 
uh, ten of the Drake Street unveiling. Uh, it was great to see um, that legacy carry on. And lastly, the child care board meeting. Um, the focus was just working with the current provincial government, advocating for the affordability and quality, uh, awaiting the framework for the intended ten dollar a day um, child care. And I know the federal government's trying to deal directly with municipalities, and of course, the provincial government doesn't really like that too too much. So um, that's the ongoing saga there. Thank you very much for your report uh, and for myself uh, right before the holidays. I had the opportunity to attend the grade five art show at the CTC. It's always a fantastic event that's hosted by uh, HW pickup and all the grade five students. They do a spectacular job of showcasing all of their talent and uh, uh, I know the kids enjoyed it. The parents enjoyed it and I think it's a, a great way to wrap up the, the year and just really showcase local talent. So it's always nice. I enjoy going to that. Um, I took along our economic development manager to biocomposite group. Uh, he had the opportunity to have a tour, give the introduction, um, and he can continue his journey on uh, economic development. Uh, that was just prior to the Christmas holidays. As uh, Councilor McGee said, we wrapped up our budget and special budget meeting um, before Christmas as well and uh, made a motion to approve all that. Very, very difficult decisions and we'll be looking at um, ways of this year, I guess, that we can be tackling a, a few grants and um, maybe going about to budget, I don't know about a different way, but maybe trying to ease some of that uh, strain that we felt. I think a lot of it came from the wildfires and uncontrolled uh, things that were out of our control when it comes to uh, RCMP and utilities and insurance. We had a wonderful delegation this morning that I think is a great way to kick off the year that trying to get our uh, our finances in order and see where we can get the best bang for our buck. So that's fantastic. I had a meeting with uh, the University of Alberta to discuss uh, the future of our zero fee tuition. If there's any assistance that they can be offering, they were the recipient of a joint grant uh, or a couple grants and they did research on the resilience that that program brought to our community and sustainability and things like that. So that was kind of just a year end wrap up of um, maybe where they can be assisting us if, if needed. Um, I also had the opportunity to do a tour at the Drake House and be part of the unveiling of that uh, street. Uh, so that was a really nice moment there. And then uh, right before the holidays, I had a meeting with um, an individual from Alberta Council uh, having a discussion around uh, the lobbyist meeting. I know we discussed this in our strategic planning a little bit about uh, whether we wanted to look at a lobbyist and things like that. Uh, he had reached out to me and said, you know, if there was an opportunity, they'd like to come and do a presentation, perhaps at a GNP, just to talk about what uh, Alberta Council does, um, the relationship with the province and building that relationship with the province. Also to understand that um, that they do a lot of the background work and that we are still the face of that. Also that we talked about grants and everything that we want to get aggressive with. They do that grant writing. They um, search for grants and things like that. Um, they have a great relationship with the premier right now. Um, and one of the communities that they worked with was Brooks, where they hired uh, Alberta Council for a year on a contract basis. And um, it cost them roughly around $5,000 a month for the services. And in return, they uh, received a $2 million grant and their grants were pushed to the front of the line. But I could go on and on about the phone conversation, but I think it's best that we uh, give them the opportunity to present. So I will have a conversation with our CAO and Pam and see if we can set that up at a future GNP and we can make that decision going forward there. And that is it for my uh, first uh, council report of the year. Is there a member of council that would like to make a motion to accept both the administration and council reports as information? Council sheriffs, thank you very much for that. And um, we'll jump into, before we go into closed, into our council initiated and roundtable discussion items, if anybody has anything. I have uh, quite a list. Oh, Councillor Ballas, go ahead. I just have one thing. Uh, uh, the the uh, Hemp conference that is going to be held in the, uh, I, I believe, in the Duke, is it not? Or February, yeah. Rennes? Yeah. Uh, I believe we somebody should be attending from here. And uh, unfortunately, I, I would like to go, but I'm not going to be uh, in the country at that time. So uh, I just would really like to see somebody being there representing Drayton Valley, seeing us we're the ones that really got this pushed to get this going. 
it's almost a, you know, whether it's going to be our economic development officer or somebody, but her council, I think somebody really should be there. Thank you for that. Yeah, I had it on my list of um, discussions as well. Um, I was going to suggest if no one wants to go that I would go myself and then asking if um, I had sent the email a while back to Kundi. I wasn't sure if that would be something that would be a requirement. I know, like Bill says that, you know, we've just. Uh, uh, or we're trying to, I have to watch what I say here because of, uh, some of the discussion is enclosed or, um, you know, trying to connect with our local businesses and support and there's uh, potential there. So I do agree that it's important to go as well. So I'm not sure if uh, Kundi and you have had that conversation. What? Uh, no, we have not your worship. What conference was it? Sorry. It's the hemp conference in February. I can forward it to yourself Kundi and then Pam. I'm not sure if there's a member of council that would like to go. I, I am interested, or I don't know if somebody wants to attend with myself or Wendy and myself, or there's an early bird registration, and I think the deadline is this today. week. So is it today? I think so. Okay, so we'd have to decide. Yeah, today. I'll get a hold of Cooney and we can we can discuss it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, wonderful. Uh, thanks for that. Did you have anything else, Bill? Okay, um, so for myself, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I also, there was a February 9th RMRA municipal law seminar. Uh, it had come through our email. Uh, I'm not sure, was this a requirement? Do you know much about that? I just kind of glanced about it and I'm thinking, is this, I can't remember, is this something that we typically go? It's for elected officials and I think administration. So I wanted to know who was going, um, if it was a requirement, if we were all gonna jump on. I believe that it's online. RMRA, or, or yeah. yeah. It, it is not a requirement uh, to attend, but I um, I uh, do encourage it, and we've uh, sent, I will be I will be attending, and I've asked our um, our general managers uh, to uh, to attend as well. I find I find those. Those sessions are uh, extremely valuable, especially for me, having um, um, been retired and coming back. Uh, it'll be a good review for uh, for me to uh, to be there. And is it in person or is it online? Because I noticed there was a Calgary and Grand Prairie, but it couldn't, there wasn't a lot of detail about the Edmonton one. I believe it's in person. It was in person, but yeah. It was in person? Okay. So I guess if for those who are wanting to attend, uh, I would say sooner than later, let Pam know so she can register and make sure everybody signed up for that as well. Uh, I wanted to touch base on uh, the Warehouser FREA grant and that application process. This was uh, before you joined us, uh, Mr. Ferris. So I just wanted to see if, uh, if we are anywhere with that. Um, if I know that one of the things when we were having meetings with Mr. Jeff McKay, that something uh, that we were going to do is work together to make sure that we were successful for that grant. So. Where are we with that? Do we have any information and are we moving forward with it? Does, is that you? Thank you, Shelley. Thank you for the question. Um, so I, I do have a list of things that uh, Warehouser does need from us. Um, so I'm working with parks to, to get that list together. They need it by the end of February. So we've got a little bit of time to kind of gather all that information. So we haven't quite started yet on gathering everything um, just due to the budget and then the holiday season. So we will be starting that right away. Okay, perfect. And you'll kind of just report to us as it kind of progresses and things like that. Correct. Yep. Perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, and also we have a uh, mobile home meeting that's coming up here. Uh, that an email went out to council. I think one of the things that we had discussed is uh, it had initially came to a regular council meeting and there wasn't a decision that was made that day. I believe it was, was it tabled or? So we did a first reading and then we tabled the second reading and we asked to have a meeting with the mobile park. Um, I guess the question was, is um, all of council uh, wanting to attend or going to attend, what is kind of on the agenda and how are we kind of expecting that to kind of play out? I know, and I'm just putting this out there because councillors have asked me, so I'm asking for some of the councillors and Councillor Sheriff? Sure, I'll speak up. Um, I am planning on attending. 
simply because I feel we should have um, approved the second and third reading. Um, I see trailer parks being run like private businesses and they should be responsible for what's being done at their locations. So I will be attending the meeting and stick to that point. <clears throat> Do we have an agenda for that meeting? I don't think any worship. No, I don't believe we do. Uh, the um, council requested the meeting. If there's any in particular agenda items that you would like to to have, we'd be happy to put the agenda together. I think I think it's a review of of the bylaw that that is uh, currently in front of council. It would be the main agenda item and what the um, manager of the trailer parks concerns are. I'm just going to go to uh, Councilor Commander first, and then Ballas, and then. Sheriffs. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I would like to attend as well. I just wanted to, um, you know, we, we had a, a one uh, owner here in that meeting and, and raised some questions um, and wanted to understand where they are coming from and if there's a, any um, information that would help me to make that decision on the second and third reading, right? So uh, because of that, I would like to attend. Okay, Councillor Ballas. Yeah, basically, I would just echo what uh, Councillor Gavana said. Uh, when that mobile homeowner was here, they felt that they never had the opportunity to express their concerns to Council. And this was just a chance to give them uh, the opportunity to uh, have Council uh, give them their our ear. And uh, I, I don't think we want to be sitting there uh, discussing, uh, discussing uh, or getting into conversations of what we want or what we don't want or how we should feel or not feel it. I think it's just to sit, sit down there and, and to listen. Uh, Councillor Sheriffs. I understand both of your points, uh, but from what was brought in front of council was what to do with the um, mobile homes that are deemed unhib at the to the point where there's they have to be torn down. And the mobile home park owners do not want to hold responsibility for removal or cleaning or anything. They want to throw it onto the municipality. Well, I don't think it's taxpayers' money, and that's why I want to have, I would have liked to see it gone through, but I understand why you want to hear the park owner's point of, I don't know, view, I guess. Councillor McKee, did you have something to add? Just, uh, would this normally be a GMP uh, discussion? Would yeah. We're, we're holding a separate meeting just for the mobile home parks. So um, I, I'm going to your point on, on budget, uh, <clears throat> another meeting and, uh, and, and a price point. Um, but we've scheduled it and it's on. Um, yeah. That's yeah, a great still, question. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So, so normally the, um, so a bylaw would come to GMP first, not for first reading. Um, and uh, so that's advertised in public. Public information and a public meeting, and uh, I believe that the uh, trailer park managers were all communicated with with respect to the proposed bylaw, and it and it came to council for first meeting, and there was some uh, concerns uh, raised. So um, council requested the meeting with uh, with the manager, and that's what we're doing. It will be outside of our GMP meetings. It's just a um, I will call it a workshop with uh, with council and uh, that individual. Okay, um, so it is, uh, yeah, slated for next week. So those that are attending then may do so. Uh, and then one just last item uh, I wanted to bring up. We have a joint council meeting coming, I believe, in February. I'm not sure. February is our next date. Um, it, we're kind of pushing the, the time here, but I wanted to just kind of ask council what would be the appetite to invite um, OCHIS to that next joint council meeting or if we wanted to invite them to the next one. I know uh, last year, and I cannot remember when exactly, but we had started those joint meetings with um, OCHIS and some of the other First Nations uh, Rocky Mountain House Council had hosted. And uh, I know that they were trying to get some things pushed through the, through the province. And we said that we would continue these meetings. And I thought that, you know, being the new year, maybe we would, you know, extend the invitation out to them. Um, just kind of wanted to say before I uh, give a heads up to Brazo County, if everybody was on board. Yep. 
Okay. Um, and that is it for uh, council initiated uh, items. Does anybody else have anything else, Councillor Ballas? Yeah, I, I see we've got a joint rec meeting scheduled for the 19th. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about it. I got it in my calendar. So did we talk about that at the last joint that I think that an invitation was going out or oh sure come on down Hans that you Hans knows. <laughs> I'm I was just trying to to I don't know work my way through that I didn't have the answer. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, and uh, through the chair to uh, Councillor Ballas. So, yeah, the invitation will go out this week uh, before the weekend. Uh, that's the joint uh, rec meeting with the uh, councillors that are appointed to this uh, board. It's with the Brazil uh, appointed people as well and our administration staff. So, I'm assuming it'll be the per first meeting. Terms of reference will be brought, and then how everything will proceed going forward. That's correct. So. The council as a whole, up from both. So it'll be just the one, just the direct committee. Yeah, just the two councillors. And who are the councillors that were assigned? So, well, that's myself and uh, Colin. And Colin, so the two of you. Correct. <clears throat> so, are, before that, are we going to get together to form an agenda or what's the plan? The information, thanks for that. The information goes out uh, today to make sure that the agenda is correct so it can be sent out for the weekend. So I'm assuming administration worked on the agenda both jointly. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then could you also let me know if the Reeve will be attending the first meeting as well? Just if he responds, I know. I believe he sits as ex officio as well. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, for that. I can do that. Okay, thank you very much for that. Okay, that is it. Um, if there's no further discussion, then uh, we have three information items, the LGFF program launch letter, uh, municipal affairs minister Rick MacGyver letter, and the minister Nixon letter. Can I get a member of council to uh, accept these information items as uh, information? Thank you very much, Councillor McGee. And I will now ask a member of council to move us into close prior to lunch. Councillor Gamana, thank you very much for that. All in favor? That is carried. Yeah, go ahead. We can take five minutes. 